Wait a minute, haven't I seen you before? I know your face. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most rewatched classic Hollywood movies. Play it once, Sam, for all time's sake. I don't know what you mean, Miss Elsa. Play it, Sam. For this list, we'll be looking at the pictures from the golden age of Hollywood that we love to watch over and over again. These flicks are so rewatchable, one might say even they are the reason the rewind button exists. As a friendly warning, some of these entries will also contain spoilers, so proceed with discretion. Which of these screen classics is your go-to rewatch? Please be sure to let us know in the comments. Number 10. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes Based on the 1949 Broadway musical of the same name, the cinematic version of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is pure fun. Save rain, save rain, touché, touché. In the flick, Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell play showgirl BFFs Lorelai Lee and Dorothy Shaw. The former is engaged to be married, but her soon-to-be father-in-law is suspicious of her intentions and sends a private eye to follow the gal pals as they journey to Paris. I'm so pleased Dorothy's taken an interest in you. I mean, she's never been interested in anyone worthwhile. No taste, eh? No, I'm a hobo collector. I might even find room for you. The film is full of side-splitting laughs and features Monroe's iconic rendition of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Even if you have seen this classic countless times, one thing is for sure, Blondes will never lose its charms. How does it look? Exactly like trouble. Number 9. Citizen Kane for decades, Citizen Kane claimed the coveted number one position on Sight and Sound magazine's The Greatest Films of All Time poll. Mr. Kane, is there a song about John? Is there a song about you, Mr. Kane? You buy a bag of peanuts in this town, you get a song written about you. Before he was even 30, Orson Welles co-wrote, directed, produced, and starred in the drama which is loosely based on late media mogul William Randolph Hearst. It was Wells' first feature film, and even though it wasn't a box office success, it has cemented its place in movie history. I think it's beginning to dawn on Jim Geddes, I mean what I say. Do you like your old man's speech? I was in a box, Daddy. I can hear every word. Praised for its innovation, including the use of deep focus and a visual effect known as wiping, Kane is still admired today. Not to mention that the big reveal at the end hits harder with every replay. Throw that junk. Number 8. Rebel Without a Cause You're tearing me apart! What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again! A tale of youth in crisis, Rebel Without a Cause offers a glimpse into the life of the American teenager. The drama features James Dean as the protagonist, Jim Stark, a troubled adolescent, and the new kid at his high school. Is that meaning me? Is that meaning me? What? A chicken! Yes. You shouldn't call me that. He gets tangled up with friends and enemies, resulting in a tragic ending. The film also stars Natalie Wood, Sal Mineo, and Dennis Hopper. What makes the flick a certified rewatch isn't just Dean's gutting performance. While his filmography is short due to his untimely death, each viewing of Rebel unpacks another layer of the potential he possessed. I like you. You know that? Why do we do this? You gotta do something. Now, don't you? Number seven, North by Northwest. Who are you? Near Aaron Boys carrying concealed weapons. His is pointed at your heart. So please, no errors of judgment, I beg of you. Oh, come on, fellas. What is this? A joke or something? Yes, a joke. We were laughing in the car. Known as the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock knew how to unnerve audiences through the power of tension. North by Northwest is no exception to this and features one of the most heart-pounding moments in cinema. Cary Grant stars as an ad exec on the run from spies, thanks to the case of mistaken identity. The thrills are a mile a minute, with twists and turns that keep audiences on the edge of their seats. Technically astonishing with a wild script to the booth, watching Northwest will always lead you in the right direction. <laughs> Number 
Number six, Sunset Boulevard. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures, used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. Ah, Hollywood. It's glitzy and glamorous, yet it can cast so much darkness. 1950's Sunset Boulevard is a deep dive into the sometimes grim and unsettling nature of showbiz. Those idiot producers, those imbeciles. Haven't they got any eyes? Have they forgotten what a star looks like? I'll show them. I'll be up there again, so help me. The picture centers on disgraced silent movie star Norma Desmond, who lures an emerging screenwriter, Joe Gillis, into her disturbed existence. Her hunger to return to the silver screen results in a gruesome outcome. The iconic ending leaves us with one of the best lines of dialogue ever uttered on screen, demanding an instant press of the rewind button. Just us, and the cameras, and those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Number five, All About Eve. Honoured with the Academy Award for Best Picture, All About Eve is the ultimate showbiz showdown. It's quite a story. Edison could make quite a thing of it. Imagine how snide and vicious he could get and still tell nothing but the truth. I had a time persuading. You better sit down, you look a bit wobbly. Screen legend Betty Davis stars as Margot Channing, a big name on Broadway who welcomes a young fan, Eve Harrington, into her life. Shortly after, Channing's world begins to unravel as Harrington maliciously takes over her personal and professional life. I can't believe Eve said those things. In this rat race, everybody's guilty till they're proved innocent. One of the differences between the theatre and civilization. It's a tale about jealousy, envy, and the harsh realities of show business. Whether it's your first or your 20th time watching Eve, always remember to keep Betty Davis's immortal words in mind. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Number four, Some Like It Hot. Some Like It's Hot is everything one could want from a 1950s comedy. A big name cast, a lively soundtrack, and a fun script co-written by Billy Wilder. Spills, thrills, laughs, and games. <laughs> this may even turn out to be a surprise party. Starring Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon, and Marilyn Monroe, the film takes place at the end of the Roaring Twenties. Curtis and Lemmon play Joe and Jerry, a pair of down-on-their-luck jazz musicians who disguise themselves in order to join a female band. I feel naked. I feel like everybody's staring at me. With those legs, are you crazy? Now, come on. A mix of crime and comedy, the film was a box office hit and won an Oscar for its costume design. Although comedy has evolved since its release, the premise has been adapted repeatedly for both television and the stage. That's right, pour it on. Talk me out of Number three, singing in the rain. What a voice, isn't she marvelous? Me. It's going over Without wonderfully, isn't it? Yeah. Singing in the Rain is a musical movie classic that you can't help re-watching. It's a wholesome, dazzling Technicolor wonder. The film centers on one of the most important moments in Hollywood, the introduction of sound. It's no secret that the jump from silent pictures to the talkies was a challenge. Singing offers a comedic and cheery depiction of the ups and downs that filmmakers faced during the period. No, no, no! Yes, yes, yes! One of the reasons it's a classic is that it has been passed down through generations, allowing everyone to share the glorious feeling of witnessing movie magic. Dancing and singing in the rain. Number two, Casablanca. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh. Casablanca is a romantic drama that has stood the test of time. Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman co-star in the black and white flick as one of the screen's most iconic romantic couples. I remember every detail. The Germans wore grey, you wore blue. Yes, I'll put that dress away. When the Germans march out, I'll wear it again. 
Bogart plays the owner of a Moroccan club, who must decide whether or not to help his former lover and her husband escape the Nazis. One of the most powerful thing about this movie is that it takes place during World War II, and was also filmed during that time. It's a poignant moment that is achieved on film. No wonder audiences have been asking to play it over and over. He's looking at you, kid. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Wizard of Oz The Wizard of Oz is the quintessential family film. It has action, heart, scares, and a fantastical adventure that will leave you feeling nostalgic. There's no place like home. There's, There's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. Released in 1939, with every viewing, Judy Garland takes all of us down the yellow brick road to the land of Oz, where we meet iconic characters, hear marvellous songs, and learn some lessons along the way. It's no surprise that it became a tradition for many families across America to tune into the annual televised screening of the flick. Oh, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Here he is, the wizard of Oz. A defining moment in so many childhoods, it's a classic that has earned its status time and time again. Whenever there's an opportunity to journey over the rainbow, we'll be there with bells on. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops, that's where you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.